Hello my dear friends, welcome back to the Artie Mummy and today we are creating this beautiful um, The Hungry Caterpillar poster which we made to sell, well, I made for my dear friend Tracy there to celebrate Book Week which happens from I think the 17th to the 23rd of August each year. It's um, Australia wide and is aimed at getting kids to celebrate books and read more and um, all those wonderful things. So I was asked to do a very hungry caterpillar poster for the staff room door because all of the classrooms were making their own and um, staff didn't feel they were quite up to it so I was nominated. So as I was beginning this I thought I think this is going to be a, a really fun easy project that I'd like to share with everybody. So what I did first was had the I had the dimensions of the door so I cut the pieces of card and glued them together until I had those the right size. There, there was a double pane glass door. Did I say that right? Well we ended up with one slightly larger piece and one smaller piece and I just drew leaves on it and coloured them in green and before it, after I'd drawn large leaves all over it I went up it with a ordinary dinner plate and drew circles with a very slight overlap to make the shape of a caterpillar doing a sort of S from the bottom to the top. Then I got my last trusty googling laptop out and some Canson 200 GSM drawing paper. Watercolour paper, it's just a heavy weight paper that can be used for just about anything. Not terribly heavy but good for this purpose. And I looked up all the different kinds of foods and fruits that the hungry caterpillar ate and just did little sketches of those, well largish sketches of those. And once I had those all drawn on to my paper, I started to paint them in nice, bright, simple colours. <laughs> so that was really fun. Getting the size of those isn't terribly difficult. You don't need to be um, terribly artistic. And you definitely don't need to stay in the lines. Preferably go outside the lines just have fun putting all those bright colours on and making them all really really vibrant and nice and big. I also decided to do exactly what the book says which is one apple, two pears, three oranges, four strawberries, five plums etc etc and this didn't take a terribly long time actually it was quite fun to do because nothing was quite the same and as you can see, I'm not really fussing with anything. I'm just popping it all together. Probably the most difficult parts part was the um, the cake and the salami. Oh, salami tended to look a little strange. So I made some foldy bits out from it and that worked pretty well. And just fitting the pieces on so that I was making good use of my paper because ultimately they're all going to be cut out and glued onto my big sheet of green leaves. Cup of coffee time there and then back into it. <clears throat> so how's everybody been? What have we been up to? I am again hoping to post more often but life seems to be getting in the way lately and that's just how it is I guess. I'll be uploading as much as I can soon and hopefully that will be good for everybody. But um, I'm hoping to do more pastels and watercolours and acrylics and everything as well soon enough. So once I had all, all those painted and the paint was dry, I went around them with a black marker pen and just outlined them and added a little bit of detail to each one. Just nice and simple cartoony type pieces of food and again not fussing with anything just 
going along and drawing outlines, making them nice and simple and easy to cut out, which will be the next step. So I'm just working my way through all those pieces. The cherry pie was interesting and fun. And I'm sorry if I'm getting a little bit boring here, but we will get there. So just getting my little, um, what's it called, exacto knife and cutting all those out. And you can see how I've definitely gone outside the lines of those pieces so that when I cut them out, I haven't got any kind of white space happening on the actual pieces that I'm going to glue onto the final piece. So got that all laid back out on the table. The green paint has dried in between time. And one thing I love about the illustrations in this book is that they're so um, lively and you can get a, quite a similar look with just basically throwing that paint on there and being really chunky with it and getting all your different colours kind of layered, starting with the lighter colours and working your way up through the yellow, green, blues and then eventually reds. <coughs> And using some of the darker colours just to create a bit of a, a contrast in the edges, edges? <laughs> in the edges of the caterpillar pieces. Getting a bit of red on there and getting his head all nice and red. I did have a little bit of trouble because these paints that my friend bought for me to do it, I just should have just used my own. But I was supplied with paint and paper to do this favor and I used what I was given and they were very very um, student quality very transparent so if you are using paint like this you can see that I went round the edge of the caterpillar with white before going back over with yellow and other colors because for the little spiky bits because the paint being so transparent the yellows and the lighter colors just would not show on top of that green so while I waited for that first layer of paint to dry I've gone around with my sharpie marker again and just put some details on the leaves and gone around the outline of things and then now going around with the yellow and the blue and the green and the little bits of red and just adding some detail now once all that's done all my pieces and just rearranging and rearranging until they look great where you know until i'm happy with the composition of the thing and then glue them down the ordinary craft glue just go around and press them down they did curl up a little bit so after i glued them once i kind of went back around and repressed them all and stuck little bits of glue under the edges that it might have come up around the place made sure they were all nice and secure and then by then the paint on the caterpillar was nice and dry and i have gone around with my sharpie again and just brought him out a little bit more going just around the outline now the finishing touch for this is to add the faces to all of all the staff members to the caterpillar so I didn't do this straight away because I wasn't sure if how they felt about being on this video. So I've left them off for now and let those guys paste them on in whatever order they wanted to once I delivered the piece. Now again with these transparent paints they can be lovely at times for different effects. But for things like the eyes I really needed to do a couple of layers of white on those first before I added the yellow or it just never would have shown and then painted the yellow and the green on and just used dark blue for the mouth over the red which made the almost black and I thought he was pretty cute in the end looking at his piece of cheese there I reckon and that's him all done and finished and that's how I delivered him along with the circle faces that I cut out and there's the finished piece with my friend Tracy and having a look at it as you're coming up to the office of the school. Everyone was really happy. They all loved it. I think it looked great from a distance, looked great close up. The kids all loved it. 
and um, yeah I hope you enjoyed it too and now we've just got some little clips of my beautiful children enjoying book week too thank you so so much for watching tonight today whatever the time is for you and hopefully I will see you sometime soon if you've got any questions about how I finished that or how I went about anything please feel free to drop me a comment thanks guys <laughs>